Welcome to 22 in 22. Today's topic is the vulva. So for today's episode, I'm going to be focusing on sort of the outer or appearance parts of the vulva as well as some definitions and then there are a few different components like the clitoris and the vagina that are covered in separate episodes. So let's start with definitions. First, the vulva is a term that covers kind of the private area or the area between the legs of those with female genitalia. And I have done a drawing ahead of time for you. So some of the major parts include the labia majora, the labia minora, the clitoris, the urethra, and the vagina. So let's start with the labia majora. That is going to be the area sort of surrounding the entire vulva or the outer edges of the vulva. It stretches from the mons pubis, so sort of that prominence that has a lot of hair at the front, all the way to the rectum, so the, the bottom. Um, and that is in blue on my diagram here. The labia minora are within the labia majora, and they are indicated by these kind of red squiggly lines. And I made them squiggly lines because labia minora vary in size and color and texture from person to person. And so oftentimes that tissue is a little bit um, or the skin is a little bit looser or floppier um, and has some folds within it too. Um, and so that's why I kind of made it the squiggly red line. But some people can have very large or prominent labia minora and sometimes people can have barely any tissue there. And it's not good or bad either way. Everyone's a little bit different, a little bit unique, and so um, whatever is there is totally normal. Sometimes they're lopsided. Now within the labia minora, sometimes there will be um, things called fortis spots, or there are little sweat glands within the labia minora and sort of projecting up onto the labia majora. Um, and again, those are little sweat glands. They secrete healthy oils to the vulva. The next component of the vulva is the clitoris, and I've talked about this in another episode, but it's indicated by this green dot up top where the labia minora meet. So the labia minora underneath the labia majora all sort of encompass that clitoris, which is toward the front of the body. Um, it is the area uh, that is primarily responsible for female arousal and orgasm, and it's good to know where it's at. Uh, this little teeny tiny black dot right behind the, the clitoris or right back behind the clitoris is the urethra or the pee hole opening. Separate from other parts, so separate from the clitoris, separate from the vagina, that's where pee comes from. But it's important because sometimes, because of its location, females are more susceptible to urinary tract infections. Um, there's a lot of bacteria, good healthy bacteria down here, um, but with wiping, sometimes little bacteria can get into that pee hole and cause infections. And so it's good to practice good wiping hygiene, so wiping from front to back when possible, and making sure you empty your bladder as often as possible. All right, and then this black, peanut looking thing is the vagina and I made it look like a peanut and not a big circle or hole because the vagina is kind of a potential space so just when someone is sitting there the vagina is basically collapsed on itself like a mouth kind of and then when something makes it open up like something inserted in there penis finger tampon um, it opens up and so it's kind of a, what we would call like a potential space, but it doesn't sit open like a circle all the time. So I wanted to make that known by making it look sort of like a peanut. The vagina is another part of the vulva that we will cover in a different episode. Other things to know about the vulva, uh, hair again on the mons pubis and the labia majora, so toward the front of the body. Um, and then wrapping around on the edges of the private area. It is also important to know that in the private area for both females and males, um, there are a specific type of sweat glands, the same sweat glands that are found in the armpits. 
This is important to know because of odor. So we're gonna come back to that in a minute, but keep in mind sweat glands here, totally normal. And lastly, lymph nodes. Lymph nodes run throughout our bodies as well as through our private areas. And sometimes we can feel them as little balls or little chains of balls underneath the skin. They usually get a little bit bigger in response to infection or if they're fighting off sometimes allergies in the head and neck. Um, but in the private area, it's usually a sign that they're fighting off some sort of pathogen, which would be a bacteria, virus, uh, parasite, things like that. And that's okay, as long as they are not tender, so they don't hurt to touch, um, and you can move them around, and they aren't getting bigger or redder, lymph nodes can be totally normal down there and a sign that your body is just working normally. Now, the other thing about labia minora is that they meet, like I said, at the clitoris. The labia minora can sometimes form like a hood over the clitoris or a sort of a fold over the clitoris. Um, sometimes not. Sometimes there's a very large hood and whatever your hood, totally fine and normal. The thing that I also want to bring up though is that because labia minora can be extra floppy and have a lot of extra tissue, it's very easy for oil and dead skin cells to kind of get stuck and built up in that private area. And that can create something called smegma, which just looks kind of like a white, oily substance that can build up in the crevices of your vulva. Nothing wrong with you, totally normal. Um, just give yourself a good wipe with a washcloth and a gentle soap if you want to when you're bathing. Um, don't wash in the vagina, but washing around the vulva, the labia minora, totally healthy and normal. Okay, now I want to come back to the sweat glands part of this discussion. I bring up sweat glands because, again, there are specific type of sweat glands in the private areas that are the same as the sweat glands in the armpits. Now, think about it. When you are exercising or you start sweating, you're hot, you sweat all over your body, on your nose, on your arms, on your legs, um, and in your armpits and in your private area. Now, not everywhere has a smell to it right? So your arms don't smell when you sweat and your nose doesn't smell. The sweat doesn't smell. Your nose smells. The sweat doesn't smell. Um, your legs don't smell, but your armpits usually smell. And your private area can also smell. So this is just related to sweat glands producing sort of a funky smell in the armpits and the private area, which leads me to a lot of people have concerns about strong odors in the private area. And if you think about it, these stinky sweat glands in the folds of our bodies, between the legs and in the arms, they're really moist and warm places. So it's very possible just at baseline your sweat glands are working. And so the ways that you can try to keep your private area nice and cool and aired out where cotton, breathable underwear and clothing, don't wear leather or anything else like polysynthetic stuff that really you can't get airflow through there very well. If you want, if you have a larger problem with smell, shaving can certainly help. So clearing out some of the hair can also clear out some of the moisture down there. Um, and just make, making sure that you bathe regularly. So bathing daily, washing some of that old stinky sweat off um, is really helpful as well to keep things smelling nice and fresh down there. Now the one thing to know is that I bring this up because there's a difference between an odor of the private area and a vaginal odor. So smell coming from within the vagina. So two separate things. The vagina itself will probably smell a little bit vinegary or um, acidic, maybe a little fishy, but if it has a very strong smell coming from within the vagina, that is a problem. But otherwise, the smell that comes from the surrounding area is what a lot of people are concerned about. And so those are some things that you can do. Nice, breathable cotton underwear, shaving, and then even wearing some antiperspirant in the surrounding area can help too. Now on to your questions. Question number one. I am 17 and deal with itching and burning and a little bit of pain in my vulva. What can I do? 
So I want to address the itching and burning and the little bit of pain. Um, that's kind of a complicated question and I would probably refer you to my vaginal vulva pain video. Um, but for the itching and burning, so some of that is going to be due to some of those sweat glands, those healthy oil secreting glands in your private area working. And so the best way to deal with it is to just make sure that you're cleaning regularly down there. Even just a wet washcloth or a wet wipe, a baby wipe, um, can wipe off some of that smegma and oil buildup. So making sure you keep it nice and clean and aired out, um, it will help with some of that. And that's just talking about the vulva, okay? If some of that itching and burning is coming from the vagina, so that potential spot, that black hole, that black peanut looking hole on my diagram, um, that would be something else. Could be a yeast infection, sexually transmitted infection, and that would be a reason to see a doctor. But if the itching and uh, irritation is just coming from the vulva area, so the labia minora, just try cleaning and wiping regularly. All right, question number two. Where are for, where are fortis spots located? I was looking at my vaginal area and I noticed that on both sides of my inner labia there were a lot of whitish spots close together on both sides of my inner labia. Okay, so yes, that is exactly what it is. So they can look like little pimples, uh, but they usually are on the labia minora um, and can extend to sort of the inner lips of the labia majora. So yeah, that's where the four spots are located. Good job. Question number three, or statement number three. Pain on mons pubis after masturbation, pain on touching it and swelling on one side of the labia majora. Hmm. Okay. Um interesting. You've got me stumped. The only thing I might say is that it it might be related to some of that increased sensitivity with orgasm. You have a lot of extra blood flow down there um, and it might be related to that. Um, and if it goes away that's great. The swelling could possibly be a lymph node if it's there without orgasm. The other thing is with masturbation and orgasm, it could be your clitoris. So check out my clitoris video. The body of the clitoris actually extends beneath the surface and then wraps around the edges of the vagina. So that could be some swelling of the clitoris that you're feeling. I don't know. Um, but if it bothers you a lot, please talk to a doctor. Question number four. I have a smell down there and the doctor didn't have any recommendations. I don't know what to do. It's been going on for years. What can I do? So that is, again, my statement about if you told a doctor, they probably did some studies on either your pee or did a vaginal swab and made sure it wasn't an infection, which is great. Um, I suspect the odor is probably from some of the sweat glands down there. It's okay. We all have them. Um, so what I would recommend for you is try shaving or trimming the hair down there, getting rid of some of that extra hair, um, and then making sure that you're wearing some nice loose cotton clothing underwear down there and see if that helps. And again, you can use antiperspirant on the private area. Don't put it in the private area, but you can put it like between your legs, on your legs, and that's totally fine. All right. Question number five. Why does it itch a week or so after I shave? Ooh, good question. So, um, shaving technique. I talk about this a fair amount, but if you are going to shave in your private area, make sure you are doing a few different things. First, using a sharp razor every time you shave, okay? It doesn't have to be a brand spanking new razor, but definitely make sure it's a sharp, good razor. You want to shave in the direction of hair growth. So that is generally going to be toward the bottom. So from the top, mons pubis, depending on how much you're shaving, down toward the bottom or rectum. Um, and then use either a soap or a shaving gel or something when you shave as well. And then afterward, when you're done, out of the shower, apply some moisturizer, okay? Because you shaved off some, some good healthy skin cells. And so make sure you're using a gentle moisturizer afterward. If you still have some itching and burning, you can use a low-dose uh, steroid ointment 
on the private area a couple times a day for a day or two until the itching and burning kind of goes away because that would be razor burn. 1% hydrocortisone would be great. All right, question number six. What percentage of girls shave their pubic hair? I feel like I'm the only girl in the locker room that still has any hair down there. All right, I don't have statistics, but you're definitely not the only one. You do not have to shave if you don't want to shave. It's totally healthy to not. So I'm, I don't know the statistics, but you don't have to shave. Hair down there is normal. All right, question number seven. I have at least two whiteheads on the crease, both sides of my labia minora near my clitoris. They don't itch or cause any discomfort down there. I just noticed them a week ago and it's still there, but doesn't hurt or anything. Should I be worried? I'm anxious. Okay. Um, so it could be a couple of things, including fortis spots or inclusion cysts. Either way, um, neither one is necessarily concerning at all. An inclusion cyst just means kind of a pocket of built up sort of dead skin cells. And if it's not on your clitoris, not causing any pain, not really a whole lot you need to do about it. You could try some soaks, um, like sitting in the bathtub to see if it can open up and drain at all, but um, nothing super concerning. If they are on the clitoris and are causing some irritation, definitely talk to a doctor about it and they can help um, figure out if there's anything to be done. Question number eight. I have a pinkish colored bump on the outside lips of my labia minora. It's been three weeks and the bump is still there and it's the same size, which is smaller than a pea. When I touch it or when I sit, it hurts a lot. What is this? Like a, it could be a little abscess or it could be a lymph node. Um, either way, I would probably talk to your doctor. I know, sorry, it's weird. You could try doing some sit, some bath sits. So sitting in the bath and trying to like open it and let it pop open on its own. Don't pop it yourself. Um, but it might be worth, if it hurts, talking to a doctor. If it didn't hurt, I would say it might be a lymph node that's just working and you don't have to worry about it. But if it hurts, it might be infected and you might need to talk to a doctor. Sorry. Um, question number nine. Is a lump on the right upper part of my mom's pubis normal? On the right upper side. It could be a lymph node. I'm not... If it's on the surface, it's not a lymph node. There are plenty of skin conditions that can happen on the mons pubis as well. So um, if it's been there for a long time, I wouldn't panic. Um, I wouldn't worry. It might be worth showing a doctor and they could maybe do a biopsy. It's tough for me to say for sure, but I wouldn't worry. And question number 10. My lips or labias are pretty big and they're really dark at the tip. Any way I can lighten my vagina? Okay, so try not to worry about it. It is also totally healthy and normal to have darker skin there. Um, again, it can be a little bit pinker or lighter than your surrounding skin, or it can be dark on the edges. What you have is pretty normal and pretty wonderful. And that'll do it for this round of 22 in 22.